And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This week, we're going to be reviewing the Savage A22 Precision. Oh, wait, yeah, no. Just the plain and boring Savage A22. We didn't hit our target, but we're just trying to see how many rounds we can get off quickly. <laughs> this week it's just the savage a22 no bells and whistles your basic boring well maybe not boring actually your basic configuration of the a22 so no iron sights which i'm actually a little disappointed about because i mean if you pay a little extra you can get iron sights uh, it comes with a two-piece rail uh, this rifle is kind of impressive for a few reasons there's a few good reasons why you might want to consider this one on your list of semi-budget uh semi-automatic rim fires now also i'm going to recommend you subscribe to the channel because in the coming months we are going to release the best of the best of the semi-automatic rim fires that are priced like below 500 dollars. so yeah we're going to be buying all of them and we're going to be comparing all of them but this is the individual review on this one so uh let's start this review off with the price on this one in canada they're about 350 which means in the u.s they're going to be like 200 250 something like that this rifle is impressive for a few reasons i mean we have a uh button rifle barrel which is not all that common for semi-automatic for for budget rim fires it has a adjustable head spacing with this barrel nut which is very uncommon which means we should theoretically get some really good accuracy which we're going to test that very very shortly uh it has a quick and easily cleanable barrel now typically i mean you're not supposed to clean uh your, your barrel through the muzzle you're supposed to start from the breech now most rim fires you just can't you just have to go through the, the, the front end of the barrel but savage is something really impressive they made it so you can literally remove this rear piece and clean it out from the breech which is really really cool we're going to show you that in a moment so anyway you guys want to see just how accurate this rifle is that's one of the most important parts of this rifle, so let's get started on that. Let's go. All right, so we are at the range. We're just gonna be shooting a little bit of 100 meters. Um, so we're still gongs, because I mean, it's a lot of fun. And we're gonna see if it's a decent plinking rifle, because a rifle doesn't inherently have to be a match rifle, for I mean, specifically at this price, as long as it can consistently hit a minute of squirrel. So this is what we're gonna be shooting today. Our steel gongs just over there. It looks a little small for you, but it's about like a eight, nine inch gong. I don't know, something like that. We'll measure it later. And from what I've noticed, it's got this really nice groove right underneath. So if you're just removing your, your mag, you can just slide your finger down the bottom of the, the stock and it'll just nicely pop it out. So I find that's really nice and pretty convenient. <laughs> this thing is a lot of fun. Although, I mean, the trigger is pretty terrible. Uh, it's got this kind of loud clacking noise when it like chambers a new round. Now let's have a little bit of fun with the rapid fire. So... We didn't hit our target, but we're just trying to see how many rounds we can get off quickly. I don't know if I hit one. <laughs> I mean, it's still pretty fun. Ideally, if you really want to like a gun to do some rapid firing with, something with a, a less long reset would be much, much nicer. I mean, I have the Savage 64F, which is Savage's most budget, like really their cheapest gun. It's one of the cheapest uh, semi-automatic rimfires on the market. I find it has a, a nicer reset than this one. So just my personal preference, you know. All right, so we're at 50 meters. We've got the Savage A22. This is the SK long range. Whoop. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. This is the SK long range match.
Okay, so in that magazine, we did not have any fa failures to fire as we did with the SK Standard Plus. No issues whatsoever. The accuracy is still kind of eh. I mean, I'm really considering that most of the issue is largely attributed to the really cheap flimsy stock. It's not conducive to good groups. Uh, it's touching a little bit on one side. Uh, I mean, you can't really expect, you know, works of wonder when you have a cheap stock. And I think we have a champion. I think our SK uh, rifle match is proving to be quite good. So for accuracy, guys, I mean, this rifle, it did, I'd say poorly with certain ammunition, whereas with the, uh, I think with the SK match, it did really well. And I, what was the other one? The um, Lapua Centrex, it also did very well. Oh, well, very well, I'd say it did decent. Decent to good. <laughs> For a plinking rifle, that's very good. For a match rifle, eesh, that's on the, definitely on the low end of accurate, okay? So, I mean, with a precision rifle, you expect uh, about 0 0.5 inches at 50 meters with a rim fire. That's what you should expect. With this one, I think we were just around a little bit less than an inch, but it was starting to look more and more consistent. So uh, I'm really assuming most of our accuracy kind of flaws were largely due to this budget stock, which I think is probably one of its biggest downfalls in this rifle. That and the trigger. The trigger is oh, awful. Anyway, uh, I think if this was in a uh, chassis, for example, the A22 Precision, I think it could do much, much, much better. So in this configuration, I mean, it got what it got. We're going to give it a 3 out of 5. Next, we have the barreled action. This is where we consider reliability. So I have cycled the cheapest, the crappiest ammunition. You know who we're talking about these guys. <laughs> We're not going to name names though, for it's these guys though. <laughs> uh, this stuff is terrible. I mean, it doesn't cycle in many, many, many semi-automatic rimfires, <laughs> which is typically not, well, I mean, I typically buy it just to see in these reviews if it'll cycle it. And I mean, it did amazing. It also cycled the good stuff just fine, except when we were doing some precision shooting with the uh, SK Standard Plus. It, it was feeding it just fine, but it would, it would cycle the bolt. You'd hear click. Okay, and it just wouldn't fire the round. It's, it's kind of like a light primer stuck. I'm not sure if, they're, uh, if their cases are thicker or what the case is, but one out of five, one out of three would not fire. So that's a pretty high failure rate. Um, yeah, so for reliability, this barreled action is very, very reliable. We had no issues whatsoever. Uh, also, I mean, uh, let's while we're talking about this barreled action, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to take apart, uh, well, especially to clean your barrel. So you just literally, you have this little pinhole in the bottom. I'm just gonna use this little screwdriver and pop it open. Just do that, press this little gray thing. You're gonna need to twist it and out it goes. This is just your recoil type spring. You kind of shove this back, pull out the spring and you can yank on the bolt and it comes right out. Now you can clean your barrel from this end, which is ideal. You do not want to ruin the crown of your rifle which will throw off accuracy and make your rifle horrible. So yeah, uh, it's, it's the exact same way to put it back together. You just kind of cram this back in, just like that. You put the pin right back in. Um, you put the pin just back in like this. You put this uh, steel rod on a spring. There's a little hole here, which will be pretty obvious when you have it. You kind of gently apply some pressure in there and turn this and until it doesn't move. Now you know that you're not able to remove it. So you then twist this back into place and you're pretty much set. You just put your cap back on and you're done. That easy, which I find is amazing. I think this is kind of what they were thinking is, let's do better than the Ruger 1022 that hasn't changed in like 50 years. <laughs> and I mean, I think they did really good. I mean, I think they upgraded the plain, basic, boring plinking rifle to something that's it's fairly accurate for a plinking, very accurate for a plinking rifle and easy to clean also for a plinking rifle. So yeah, I think they did pretty good. So for the barreled action, we're gonna give it a four out of five. Next we have the trigger, which I think is probably one of the biggest flaws of this rifle. Well, that and the stock. Um, this trigger is, eeeh, it's not really not that nice. It's got a long reset. It's got a lot of creep. <laughs> 
it's really probably one of the worst trigger I've seen on a uh, plinking rifle. For example, I have their Savage 64F, which is pretty much one of the cheapest uh, room fires that you can buy on the market today. And it has a better trigger than this one. I know, it's pretty bad. Okay, so um, yeah, there's so much creep in this. It doesn't break very cleanly. And also, if you play with this trigger, whole trigger housing assembly, it is so flexible. I mean, I know, it, since the Ruger 1022 has been out forever, we always tend to compare it to it because, well, it's kind of the, the most reliable semi-automatic rimfire. Uh, and if you compare both of these trigger um, housing assemblies, like the Ruger is like rock solid. Whereas this one, I mean, you could, I feel like I could almost snap it in half if I gave it a good jerk. But uh, I mean, in its stock, that, that really won't happen because it's protected, obviously. But I mean, yeah, the trigger is downright disappointing. We're gonna give it a two out of five. And also at the uh, the factory, it was like weighing about 4.4 pounds and not very consistent, 4.4, five. And so next we have aftermarket support. So if you wanted to change out the stock, you can do that. Boyd's has some. If you wanna get some rails, they do make them. That's not a problem at all. Uh, if, I mean, if you really wanted the best stock, just go with the Savage A22 Precision. Don't waste your time. Just buy the best of the best. I mean, we're looking at getting one reviewed probably in the uh, January, February. So, I mean, stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, this is this is probably one of the main factors that caused our accuracy to kind of be adequate to good, not good to great. Next we have, uh, is this stock free floated? No, it's not. Definitely not. It's touching on the right side. I mean, I'm not going to slide a piece of paper down there because it's literally touching. So no, it's not free floated. So for the stock, um, this stock is probably one of its weakest features, not in forms of shape, but more in forms of rigidity. So there is a ton of flex here between this barrel and the stock. So that's really negatively affecting our accuracy. Likely that's why we didn't get half inch groups and we only got like 0.9 inch groups at best with one flyer. <laughs> so other than that, I mean, this this rifle has some nice texturing. Texturing, you really won't be disappointed with that. It's got uh, a little bit of a shorter length of pull. And for a large size hand, this fits my hand very, very well. Whereas on a lot of other rim fires, it's kind of like you're usually left with your pinky half dangling off, at least for me anyway, with large size hands. So for the stock, we are going to give it a three out of five. I might be being a little bit generous, but it's something more like a two and a half to three. I mean, it, it should be stiffer to help with the accuracy, but uh, in forms of ergonomics, it's it's fairly decent. Next, we have the warranty. So on paper, Savage's, um, Savage's warranty isn't all that impressive. Like they have a one year warranty that only covers defects and workmanship. I mean, after that, you're theoretically on your own. You They do want you to register the product, and I do believe they want proof of purchase. Now on paper, that sounds kind of like, oh, okay, well, Mm -hmm. But in reality, their warranty is much, much better. I had to return one of my Savages, uh, I think about a month and a half ago, two months ago, and um, I didn't have the receipt. I wasn't the original purchaser. I didn't register the product. I performed modifications that I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I called them up. I told them this, and they're like, ah, don't worry about it. Just send it in. We'll take care of you. I mean, what company does that? <laughs> so, I mean, on paper, yeah, their, their, their warranty looks pretty disappointing, but... Uh, in reality, they, they, they perform much, much better service than what their fine print stipulates. So, I mean, that's really, really great of a company to actually do that. Uh, one point we forgot to mention is the um, magazine. Oh, sorry, warranty, we're gonna give it a three out of five. Uh, this is magazine. So this is a rotary magazine. And I mean, I was shooting the cheapest, crappiest ammunition and we have had no issues cycling it. Uh, the, only am am the only ammunition that we did have issues cycling was the SK Standard Plus, which is really, really waxy. And I was running a really a ton of waxy ammunition through that magazine, that one magazine. At one point I fired and well, it didn't go off. They went click. So I was thinking, okay, light primer strike. I opened the, the action and there was no round in the chamber. I removed the magazine and I'm like, well, I fired five. I'm pretty sure I loaded it to 10, but the magazine's looking empty. But if I tilt the magazine, I could tell there were some rounds kind of in the side. So um, I banged it on the table and it, it rotated, obviously. So my impressions are that a lot of this waxy ammunition, the wax gets stuck around the inside, well, around the outer side of the inside of this uh, magazine. And it causes it to kind of like slow down and kind of stop so um that's something to note but i mean all the other ammunition we i ran probably about 600 rounds through this rifle no hiccups whatsoever other than the one i just mentioned but like this thing runs bloody reliably all the worst ammunition in this thing 
runs great. So if you're looking to pick up a good planking rifle, I would definitely add this one to your list of, uh, of planking rifles. I mean, we have the Savage 64F and I've had, sorry guys, a lot of issues with it. Um, this is my second Savage 64. This is the Savage A22, by the way. I have a Savage 64, it looks like this. This is the second one I've bought. I only bought the second one to review it just so I can get a review done on it. But my first one had tons of failures to feed and this one has failures to fire. Not sure why. <laughs> I mean, even after cleaning it, it had fail failures to fire. I cleaned it again and it seems to be running, you know, semi-reliably. So in my opinion, this is kind of Savage take on making a reliable, like bulletproof, reliable, semi-automatic rimfire. And I think they did a really, really good job. I think all well, the features that they did to this rifle is going to be really, really nice. And one thing to note about this magazine, I find they did a fantastic job at designing this, like, especially with this stock. So if you really want to quickly remove your magazine, you can easily slide your finger down the middle of your stock and remove it. So quickly and nicely like that. So contrarily to the, let's say the Ruger 1022, which you kind of got to get in there and fiddle, this one you can nicely just slide your finger down the middle and remove it. And it's actually fairly nice and easy to throw back in. In my opinion, probably a bit easier than the Ruger 1022. And for those of you who want to know which one you should get, this one over the Ruger 1022, we are going to be doing a comparison video for you guys on that. So stay tuned, hit that like, hit that subscribe, um, and yeah, see you on the next review.